No, but I can really respect what you're saying. You're wanting to share and spread um, that knowledge. Everybody wants to talk about millionaire status, billionaire status. Is but is it really about the money? No, it's not. It's about the journey. We are back. And I want to talk about something. Last week was phenomenal. You think so? Yeah. Tell me what was phenomenal. Um, I think just the synergy. I think our ability to sit down out of just a busy day, right. right, and just relax and come up with what we think is important to talk to just, not just you and I, but I think it's good that, that you and I go over some of these things, but I think that allowing the public, which I, I am such a, you know, I'm such an introverted person, right? You, yeah. introvert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, I like okay. to keep my things private and kind of move stealthy. But I will admit, as I get a little older, I think it makes things a little easier to talk about the journey, you know? Mm. I do think that as you're getting older and older, you do become a little more mouthy. Wow. No, but I can really respect what you're saying. You're wanting to share and spread um, that knowledge and understanding so people don't have to make the same mistake that we did. Right. You know, I initially thought it was, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about some of these things so that our children don't have to make these mistakes. But today is a world filled with just social media and there are so many people, there are so many eyes watching everything that we do, right? I mean, mm -hmm. in our place of business, we get questions all the time, whether right. it's from our staff, whether it's from our community, whether it's from our stakeholders. And I already feel like we're kind of out there in the open, um, you know, exposing some of those vulnerabilities. So well, why not now? Right. Well, how about today we talk about some of those um, nuggets of information and the challenges or even maybe talk a little bit about our personal, um, our personal challenges. Look, look, everybody wants to hear about the money. Everybody wants to talk about millionaire status. Billionaire status is becoming more more common now. So let's talk about some ways that we took advantage of um, to become millionaires. Okay. But is it really about the money? No, it's not. It's about the journey. Okay. And I think if there are a few thousand people out there that can learn from the journey, yeah. why not? Why not? Well, why don't you start? Why don't you kick us off? Well, look, I have, I have journeyed through every what seems economic challenge you can think of. I have been through the lows of the lows, and I'm just talking just me as a this before this before marriage, right? I have started from the low. I know what middle looks like, and I am now realizing what a higher tier looks like. And if people don't understand what low looks like. Lose everything. Drop what you're doing, stop working, and sit there for a minute, and you'll realize what the lowest of the lows actually look like. Tell me a little bit about where the lowest of the lows was for you. Um, you know, I actually put a video out some time ago, and I'll put you know a clip up here in this corner where you can click on, and it's actually a, a hotel that uh, my family and I had to stay in when we got evicted. Um, you know, I came home from school one day and lo and behold, all of our stuff was in a was in our front yard and as embarrassing as it was at the time, I now realize, I now realize um, how much strength it's actually given me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? You know, we, we I, I definitely can't say that I've walked that same path, um, but life has actually thrown its own set of challenges my way. Um, I remember, I mean, who can remember back in like eighth grade, middle school, high school-ish, and I'm assuming um, just based on our, our conversation that that was kind of a, that was the same age when you kind of hit, hit that hiccup, right? Yeah, you're at the peak of your hip hop state and everything right. is about cool and yeah. being flashy and yep. how, you, how, how you're perceived in the, in the public eye. Yep. Yep, right. I so remember. that is a way to become humble overnight. Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about a story that I have. And for girls or women, I think girls at the time, mm -hmm. I think it's so um, life changing to be 
you know, in the end, right? It's life changing to have the clothes. It's could can be life changing to have, um, you know, the style. As you get older, that changes 100%. You stop being so superficial. But I remember. Um, not always having a lot of money. I remember um, being able to go to like Target and get three outfits. And I remember, this was way before you, honey. I remember there was a guy that I had a crush on. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I would go out with her if she wore five new outfits. <laughs> well, I only got three. <laughs> And so what do you do on those second two days, on those last two days, uh -huh. right? You can't recycle it. Uh -huh. And so I just remember that feeling of just not having. Now, granted, it's not as devastating as not having a place to call home, mm -hmm. but it's so impactful uh, as, a, as a young teenager. Let's just go back to superficial. I think that's super important because I can compare that to where I'm at now. Here it is, this guy that's like, hey, if you wear five new outfits, right, I'll go out with you. Did you mm -hmm. get the date? No. Okay, all right. But luckily, right? Luckily I didn't because <laughs> then we, may, we probably may not be here, right? <laughs> may, may, may not have been. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But look at how psychologically programmed right. that person is. Right. Now let me jump fast forward, right? The majority of my clothes all look the same. You would have no idea if I wore the same pants yesterday that I did today. You'd have no idea. In this in this phase in this of your phase. life. Absolutely. And like it doesn't right? matter. It doesn't matter. I buy the same three pair of of jeans, of Lululemons. Um I wish I had stock in that. Um three of the same shirts. I buy the same shoes. I, I just don't I don't understand why it's so important to condition young children at such a, I, I mean, I understand. It's all marketing, it's money, it's money coming from your pocket to the exec's pocket, giving those big bonuses, increasing market cap on stocks. I understand, but at the expense of who, right? So tell me, why do you buy the same, why do you buy the same of everything? Oh, it's, it's actually pretty easy for me. Um, throughout my readings, throughout my watching many, many, um, you know, um, by, uh, bios on people, it's a, to me, it is such a waste of time to sit there in the closet day after day. Do you know how much time you waste looking in the closet trying to find a, an outfit mm, so that mm -hmm. you're not, or that you're probably fitting into the superficial category? And I'm not, no dig on you, because you wear something different every single day. Um, but for me, it just makes it so much easier right. to just go in there and just grab the next set, the next set, and just put it on and go, right? I can care less what people think, like, oh my gosh, he, he wore that yesterday. Well, little do you know, I probably didn't. Or did I? <laughs> you know, it, does, it, it really doesn't matter to me. So let me ask you, what are, what are some life lessons that you've learned um, so far? Let's get back to the millionaire talk. Um, yes. I have made a lot of wealth. And when I say I, it's the research that I put in, it's the risk that you know I take collectively that we decide to go in on you know whatever investment that it is. But specifically in the stock market, I have had you know ups and downs with the stocks. Mm -hmm. Just I, I will admit it. The first time, I got, I ran into a little bit of money. I think it was maybe like $10,000. I took $5,000. Um, I got, I, I caught wind of a stock that was going to do, it was a penny stock at that. Um, and I put $5,000 all in, all at once, no dollar cost averaging, no research, just, you know, I, I, I heard from who was supposedly a good friend that it was a good investment. I got burned. I lost all of the money the company went bankrupt, which seemed like overnight. I mean, everything just seemed to happen so fast. Um, so what I have learned, I think the most valuable lesson in that is I know how to lose money. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really good at knowing how to lose money. So because of that, I just do the total opposite now. I don't take advice from somebody else. So if you see Jim Cramer on CNBC and he's telling you to buy a stock, do your own research, 
do your own due diligence and there are plenty of YouTube videos out there to understand you know um, the the PE the the, the market cap you know P&L sheets balance sheets but more importantly understand the CEO right understand where that person's coming from and understand their mission are they all in like an Elon Musk right where they're gonna sleep on the on the you know the, the, the car manufacturer floor you know um, and if that's the case then you may want to look a little deeper into that stock because this person's all in and that's one thing that I've learned so I do the total opposite of what I did in my youth to lose five thousand dollars so I think I'm a whole lot better now I mean I don't know what do you think well I think yes but it's not just about stocks, right? It's about yeah. those life decisions. So you had a life decision to make. You took $10,000. What'd you do with the other five? Oof. Okay. Uh, club. Not, drinks, not today. Clothes. <laughs> Oh, superficial, superficial things. Okay, okay. It's really just about those life decisions, right? What decision you make can certainly impact you for the next, how long did it take to recover from that loss? You still pay for it to this day, right? That's money that could have been put away in an IRA or tucked away somewhere, you know, earning interest in a treasury or a bond or a CD or a high yield savings account. You pay for it even today. But the lesson learned outweighs the loss right. in money, obviously. So it was a life lesson that you learned. So for stocks, you absolutely love stocks. I know that. You absolutely love digging in, doing the research, talking about the CEO, watching a ton of videos. I know because I hear them yeah. all day long. So you do what you love yeah. and you'll never work a day in your life. No, um, it's and it's the outcome, right? Sure. So a stock is going to be cyclical. Investments are cyclical. Whether you're in, you know, real estate or, you know, um, oil, oil and corn. I mean, everything's going to be up and down. So you have to realize that it's about mm -hmm. how long you're going to stay in and the, and the research that you're going to continue to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's you know widely important to understand. So it's not necessarily. Um, just becoming wealthy. I mean, it's again, it's the journey, right? Right, and it's the excitement and the anticipation of, oh my gosh, it's actually paying off, right? I actually did something very, very well, and collectively, we we reap the benefit. So, would you say that what you're doing, that you're good at it? Um, yes. Okay. I have an innate ability to look at what would be investments um, to some, a waste of time to others. Um, and I, I do think I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. So I always live by the rule that if you're good at something, continue to do it. I don't even, I don't even think you should necessarily challenge your, yourself as something that you're not good at. For what? At the end of the day, you can waste so much time realizing that I wasn't good at that, I didn't get, I didn't get any better, and it sucks as a result, and I'm miserable, mm -hmm. as opposed to finding something that you actually love to do. You don't mind putting in the work. It, in fact, it's not, we all heard this, right? If, if, you know, if, if you really love it, it's not work. Right. So become the expert at it, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, I would say I am good. I don't know when I'm gonna reach expert level. Uh, I'm not Warren Buffett. You know, I don't have this, you know, 80 or 90 years, however, however old he is, all this knowledge wrapped up into this body. I'm, I'm still relatively young. Did you say like 80 or 90 years, like he's older than 90, older than 80? Um, I don't know exactly. No dig on Warren Buffett? I, I will put his age somewhere over here. <laughs> but, um, um, but that's a lot of knowledge, doing something that he absolutely loves and he makes it seem so easy, right? Mm -hmm. Just keep investing in the stock that's gonna do good, in the stock that's gonna be here longer than you, as long as it pays dividends, things like that. I know we're really going off into a tangent just on stocks, but I think it is definitely one of the things that we have used to build this ladder of, of success and wealth. Right. It, outside of real estate, of course, and outside, outside of, our, of our many businesses that we have as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Yes, and I think that when you talk about millionaire and you talk about the the workforce and what you do, you really want to make sure that you just hone in on your gift, mm. that you um, cultivate, develop, um, and grow that gift. Grow what you like to do, 
um, grow what you're good at, right? Grow with what you're good at. Uh, you know, there's some things out there that I probably haven't explored that I might be good at. Might be good at. And really stepping outside of that. But if you're in what you know that you're good at, yeah. master that shit, right? May as well. All right. Master that poop emoji. Um, <laughs> and just just to bring some relevance for those that don't really you know believe in oh my gosh all right you're good at something how do you become an expert or why not challenge yourself listen when you're in school I mean you're gonna hear you know you're gonna hear your teachers you're gonna hear your your counselors they challenge yourself do things that's gonna challenge you and that's fine I would like to give translation to that do things that's gonna provide you exposure mm -hmm. to the things that you may find interesting or not at an early age but yeah. once you start gaining some age you know you're starting to elevate in age it's time to hone in on the things that you're good at yeah well okay i could i could maybe go with that but and we are still dipping into other things that we don't necessarily know whether we're good at it but it's interesting to us and so i don't think that you're too old to try something new what do you think here's a and i'm gonna and i'm gonna read this it's a it's it's a it's a bible verse um and it's proverbs eighteen sixteen. your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men every one of us has a gift Right, and, mm -hmm. and it's like you said, it's about cultivating that. Mm -hmm. Every last one of us has a gift. If you're good at cooking hot links, then be the best hot link cooker and all the passion and love that you could pour into that hot link and sell that thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're good at cooking your ribeye, do the same thing. If you're good at creating lighting, lighting for a YouTube video, then be the best at that. I'm getting the sense that you're getting hungry because you're talking about <laughs> nothing but food. But yeah, I do. In all seriousness, in all seriousness, really that journey to discovering your gift is where it's at, right? It's, it's really doing um, more listening listening to those little those nuggets just like you mentioned you've seen a ton of videos a ton of articles you've read a ton of books to help you to discover how to get better at your gift mm. which was stocks mm. or which was finance or money or or any of those things right you're listening and you're learning things that you probably wouldn't otherwise use if you were doing more talking. True, true. And for those that, that need further clarification, right, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to put together both a male perspective and a female perspective. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear from you about some things that, some gifts that you're cultivating or some new, some new areas that you're, that you're ex, um, experimenting with in hopes to become eventually an expert. Mm. So I think for me right now, I know for me right now is I'm the gift of, of bringing people together collectively, mm. more importantly, women together to, um, to network and to build. And, and I know that that is a gift that I have not necessarily been cultivating all my life. Um, but I do feel like in a, in a sense, part of that gift that I have is the gift of being open to receiving um, information, being approachable. I am, I would say I'm somewhat like you. I'm kind of introverted, wouldn't you say? Mm, I think it all depends. Okay. Depends yeah. on? It depends on our environment. Sure, sure. Yeah. In a new environment, definitely an introvert. Definitely mm. an introvert mm. for me. Um, but as I do more of this work, it's been more of stepping outside of what has been comfortable to me and you just never know because I've been learning from other women um, about you know this this journey of of being um, an entrepreneur a woman other women that may be in this same space so yeah I would say I'm listening a lot more mm -hmm. um, and I'm learning a lot more but I do know that creating that space has been important for me because women just don't necessarily always have that space that space to to um to learn in um we're, we're always trying to climb that corporate ladder as well we're trying to make successful businesses so um sharing those 
that information is, is really important to me. I would say, because we are talking about, you know, w- what lessons can we, you know, supply the, the world mm-hmm. um, for those who are looking for, you know, just nuggets of information to reach that millionaire status, right? Right. If, if that's where you're trying to truly get, truly get, get to, you have to surround yourself around people who are one just smarter than you mm-hmm. and realize that hey listen I, I i'm not the smartest person in the room right now when i talk about smart i always like to differentiate between smart and intelligent right there are people right. who can you know whip things together and it, they just have this again this innate ability to just understand and manipulate in a way that others just can't and to me that's a higher intelligence but smart is something that you know people have learned over time, whether it's book smart or just having you know, a conversation like we are right now. But you have to surround yourself and humble yourself. That's really, really tough to do. Yeah. Especially my guys out there. It's really, really tough to be in a room and realize that, man, you're not the smartest cookie in here. You're not the toughest cookie in here that's gonna be able to go out there and make a million dollar business overnight. But mm-hmm. guess what? This guy does that guy does, that lady does, that group knows how to do it, and it's time to shut up and listen. Right. It's time to sit back, bring your notes out, mm-hmm. ask a few questions for sure, to ensure that you're engaged, right? Is my mm-hmm. brain keeping up with this? Let me ask some questions to ensure that I'm actually processing this correctly. You just don't wanna get lost. Um, but for the most part, shut up, sit back, just learn, yeah. right? You can't talk to a YouTube video. So what do I do most of the time? I'm watching, I'm learning, right? Mm-hmm. There's no point on me yelling at the at the screen. Right. So I'm absorbing all this good information. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think that it's probably way harder for men to just do that than women. We naturally will just shut up and listen, right? We, we we're better at that. Um, no dig against the men, but digging. Um, You're saying that women are better? Absolutely, women are better at listening. Absolutely not. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. Ah, I, nah, I don't know. Nah, nah. I, <laughs> I work with a lot of women. See, right I've now seen... you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, in all seriousness, right? I do feel like I do agree with you that we, when you listen, you can don't listen just to be listening. Listen for that wisdom. Listen for that understanding. What are you missing, and how can you incorporate that into your business or into your uh, into what you're working on? Mm. There are so many pieces of information that we will miss because we weren't listening. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, listen. If if you feel like you know, this is this is giving you uh, value. If you're gaining something from this, please do not hesitate, you know, to give this a thumbs up because especially now, because what that does is it lets us know that this is the type of information that you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's something that you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, cut this out. This is just not working. Send us something in the chat. You know, the only way that we're going to understand, again, you can't, you can't, we can't hear you. Um, so the only way that we're going to understand um, what people want or what ideas we can share, um, I would consider us to be very successful. I know, again, listen, I know what the bottom looks like. I know the challenges, mm-hmm. right? I don't know every challenge out there, but I, I, I have known enough because I've sat in it long enough to realize that I don't like this. Um, I don't like having to live out of a hotel. Um, having my things put out on the lawn or not having, you know, two nickels. Is it two nickels to rub or two pennies? I don't know. We'll say two nickels. Two nickels to rub. Um, and, and here's the deal. It's, this doesn't happen once. I didn't lose everything once. It's twice, right? Yeah. Lost everything and had to start over two times. Um, and you know all about that. I do. Right? You know about our second time. Mm-hmm. Um, humbling ourselves, but you want to know something? That was a transition before the, right? Yeah. You, you have to, I think Rick, Rick Ross may have said it best, like you have to tear things down first to rebuild before you, ele- yeah. before you can elevate. Yeah. And that is a true testament to our relationship, to our life um, that I can appreciate, right? Because it's mm-hmm. an easy story to tell. It's not one that where we have to, okay, let's do some research into how, how do poor people navigate? No. 
there, there are, are. There is no Google for that. <laughs> there's, there's no Google <laughs> there's for There's no that. search engine. <laughs> there's only experience. And, you know, we've experienced the, the ups, the downs, the, the lows, the highs. Um, and again, you know, I don't, I don't regret any of it. You know, I can actually appreciate it because it's, it's humbled. I, I know that it's humbled us in a way that where, you know, I, I don't have to feel superficial anymore. I don't have to have the latest and the greatest anymore. Um, I think we experience a lot of luxuries, which we will talk about um, in upcoming videos. You know, how, how do we experience luxuries and is it worth it, mm -hmm. right? Are certain credit cards worth the six hundred and ninety five dollar yearly fee is it worth it or can you actually extract a lot of good value out of some of these cards and actually make some money and we're gonna dive deeper into those and share more insights and hear from you all you know I would really love to just interview you and your innermost thoughts guy really get personal I feel like, like I got an interview now no you didn't mm -hmm. but get deeper down into like your heart. Um, I think that people would like to hear that. I really hear what you really, really think and feel and what makes you tick. So that's probably a topic we'll need to talk about and discuss in future videos. Let's let these people decide if that's something that they want to hear. All right, hold on. Who do you want to have interviewed first? Myself or Jackie? Jacqueline. Who do you want to hear interviewed first? And you will all be able to see it in the notes or in the, the chat, the discussion. Um, whoever's name comes up the most, that's what we're gonna do. There. Listen, thanks again. This always really, really good interviews. Yeah. Right? We kind of have good conversations. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, Let's keep it going. I don't know if I asked this already, but did you already, did you already cook or did you already make What? Food? Did you already you asked that the last time and you be, you should be happy we're back on here. Well, it's kind of hungry. Yeah, I can tell.